Hey guys, Sam back in Trailmakers, and I want to try making a cannon-powered engine. Now I have no idea how practical this is going to be, or what type of cannon I should even use, but I think I can get it working. So, let's get right into it. So starting out in the sandbox here, the first thing I'm doing is just starting to build up a really simple vehicle. Now I wanted to put down some cannons, and just try using them to thrust it forward. Not trying to do anything too fancy with them yet, but I want to see the kind of knockback that these things have. So see building up my simple vehicle here, and it actually isn't too bad. You can see this first shot, it actually slowly moves back, and firing a whole bunch much more it seems to work pretty well to move it. Now, these were the very tiny cannons, and I ended up switching to the small cannon instead. And even though the name would imply it's supposed to be a little bit better, it seems to be exactly the same, except it takes up four times the footprint. So I ended up switching here to this massive cannon, and this one's actually an explosive cannon. You can see it's not half bad. It moves me back really far. And it seems like one of these is a lot better than those tiny cannons. Now, it did have a tendency to sort of just fall apart randomly, and I realized here, if it shoots a train too close, it ends up just exploding the entire vehicle, so I have to be a little careful about that, and I tried a medium cannon, but this one seemed to be about equally as good as that large one, except that it was mounted a little awkwardly and <laughs> ended up just flipping me. Now besides these cannons, there's actually another main type, and it seems to be these object shooters. Now here I have a beach ball cannon, and I ended up just putting it on the front here, and after I got that mounted on here, it actually does shoot beach balls reasonably far, but it doesn't knock me back at all, and the beach balls are coming out pretty sporadically, so I wasn't too sure how it was going to turn out, and the snowball cannon seems to be exactly the same, except the snowball seemed to randomly melt and explode. So if I was going to use that, I'd have to be pretty careful. And it seems like the other cannons I was using were a lot better. Now there's one other thing I saw that really got my attention. It was this tractor beam thing. And when I turn it on here, nothing happens at first. So I ended up putting a loose block right in front of this tractor beam. And it does pull it in really well, but it's not really a cannon. So I really didn't think it was going to be good to use here. And instead, I wanted to do another test, but this time with the original cannons shooting blocks. Now the reason I wanted to try this was just to make sure that none of the cannons were going to cause anything to explode when they hit a block, because that was definitely going to cause some problems. But I just ended up building up a simple vehicle here, and I put down an explosive cannon like this. After I did that, you see I'm putting down some wings on the sides, and this is so I could put my seat down. Now, I didn't really take too much time trying to balance this vehicle or anything, because I just wanted to do some more tests with the cannons. But after I made sure to balance everything out like this, it instantly caused everything to explode, and the medium cannon was the exact same thing. It seems like these explosive cannons do exactly what they say, and once they hit something, they cause it to explode. And even though they give it a lot of energy, I can't really contain this explosion very well, and instead the ballistic cannons, which are the smaller ones, seem to perform a lot better. You can see once I snap a block onto the front, the small cannon shoots it away, and it gives it quite a bit of energy. And in fact, after that, I shot it again, and it seemed to work pretty well. Now I realized in the same area I have that small cannon, I could fit four of the tiny cannons. And I thought if I hit that same block with four cannons at once, it should go flying. So I added all those in place now. And after I did that, once I try shooting it, you can see I get quite a bit of thrust. So I ended up just positioning a block right above everything here and going to shoot it, it just disappeared. And I had to go into my editing software to see what was going on and going frame by frame here, once I shoot it, it just disappears. And I thought one of two things were happening here. Either it got so much energy that it just flew away instantly, or it was actually getting disintegrated. Now, I didn't know if this game could disintegrate things, but there was no real evidence that it was actually flying anywhere. So I was going off the assumption right now that it was probably getting disintegrated. And I ended up trying to adjust the delay so that all the cannons shot slightly out of sync, but this still caused it to just explode. So I ended up changing the delay to be a lot larger. You can see it does shoot it away, but it was pretty sure only a single cannon shot was actually hitting it now, and changing to the small cannon this time, it seemed to perform basically exactly the same. So while the tiny cannons still are useful since they're so compact, it doesn't seem like I could shoot the block multiple times, and I'm pretty limited in how much energy I can impart on it. But with those tests done, I realized the tiny cannon was probably the way to go, and the next thing I wanted to work on here was the crankshaft. So to start on that, I wanted to build up a simple platform here, and I just used the largest block I could find, and just stacked a bunch of them together. After I had a reasonably large surface though, I started working on a hole here, and this is to hold the first bearing I'm going to use for the crankshaft. Now to make a bearing, there's a few ways to do this, but one way that people have shown me is you could actually take a servo like this, and if you set the strength to zero, it just acts like a normal bearing, and it ends up just spinning however you want it to. So after I got that in place, I just put down a big pole on it so it'd swing back and forth, and you can see that working here. It just slowly goes back and forth, and this should work perfectly since once I get a piston on it, it should just keep spinning around. So to start working on the crankshaft, I ended up just attaching it to the pole like that, and I realized here I actually need to double up my pole. Now the problem with the servo is that it's 2x2 two two instead of 1x1, one one, which is a little annoying because that means if 
I attach anything to it, it has to be off to one side or the other, but I figured I could probably make it work here. And after I got that in place, I wanted to work on the first crank. Now I'm making everything pretty large here and I'm doing that just so that I can get a really easy look on what's going on. And I realized I actually made it a little too short here. So I have to make it a single block taller, but after I do that, just attach it right back where it was before. And to work on the crank, it's just gonna be another set of bearings slightly offset. And once I do that, I ended up adding another bearing onto the other side and it just basically mirrored exactly what I had before. And with that done, you can see here, it actually works just fine. As it swings back and forth, the middle part is able to freely rotate, but it is bound to the main crankshaft. So the piston's able to swivel back and forth, but remain upright and still impart rotation to everything going on. Now I ended up trying to compact the mechanism and I switched out the first servo for a helicopter engine. And this was for two reasons. The first one is that the helicopter engine has attachment points in the top, which means I could shrink this down by one extra block. The other reason I did this is that now I can actually drive the crankshaft in reverse. And the advantage to that is that means I can actually drive the piston with the crankshaft and test the tolerances and everything. And it makes it a lot easier than trying to attach the cannon and using that to test it. So I forgot everything compacted the way I wanted. I ended up adding in some controls to the helicopter engine and I realized I could shrink it by one extra block. And with that done, it's fundamentally the exact same thing, just a lot more compact. Now, this looking good, the next thing I want to work on is the piston. And that's why I'm putting in braces here. Now, in theory, braces shouldn't have any collision, so they should work pretty well. And testing it out now, seems to move up and down just fine, and that should be a good start to the piston. Now, I ended up rotating the piston 180 degrees so that it's above the crank, and once I did that, I started working on the cylinder. Now, after I got something that I thought looked okay, the test was interesting. I'm still not sure why that happened, but it didn't happen again, so... I guess it's fine. But anyway, now getting this to work was actually quite tricky because I needed the piston to be able to freely move up and down in the cylinder while not being able to fall out. And trying to make this happen was a lot harder than I thought. Basically, every time I lowered it, it'd stop it from falling out, but then it would bind up on the bottom and it wouldn't allow it to move up and down anymore. So I tried compacting the piston a little bit. I ended up replacing some of the locks for smaller ones, but even this still couldn't quite get there and I had a lot of collision issues. So I tried switching out some of the braces for shields, and shields have a smooth surface, so I figured they might slide past things a bit easier, but even this did not seem to help. But what was good here was actually using a tube. Now the reason the tube is great is that it's eight blocks long, which makes it really easy to build with, but also the tube is really compact, so I can actually have it slip past things a lot easier. And already here you see I got like 270 degrees of rotation, and with a little bit more tuning, it actually was going around just fine. Now to hopefully improve this, I wanted to stack a second one of these crank mechanisms at the top, and I wasn't really sure what was going to happen here, but I figured maybe it would allow it to go straight up and down, and therefore I could avoid any problems at all. But adding this in just caused problems. It just fell down like that, and I tried making the tube a little bit tighter against the sides. I thought maybe that would help it from falling, but it still always just fell out like this. So I ended up deleting that, and you can see it just attached the tube right back in place. After that, I ended up just deleting those things that made it tighter against the sides, and with that done, it actually mostly seemed to work. The only time it seemed to bind up was when it was at high speed or when it was getting pushed up, but neither of those things really should be a problem in the full design. So I decided this was actually probably good enough, and I wanted to try running with it. So the cylinder looking pretty good, I still needed a way to shoot the tube, and you can see here I'm putting down a block on top of the tube, and I should be able to shoot that and therefore drive around the crankshaft. So I was able to spin freely enough around there, and I wanted to try adding in the cannon now. And you'll notice I'm actually putting in a small cannon, and it's because I realized there's really no big difference between the tiny one and the small one, and the small one just ended up being a little bit easier to put down here, so that's exactly what I did. After I had that aim the way I wanted, giving it a test now, it was actually quite hard to shoot the piston, and I accidentally shot the crankshaft, which caused it to explode. But giving it another test here, I actually did manage to shoot the piston. You can see it drive the crankshaft down, but it also broke off the top piece, which means it's not going to be reusable. Now I ended up switching out the small cannon for the tiny cannon. Now after I did that, I also switched out that top lock for a tube, because I figured maybe the tube was a little more resistant to getting shot, but it ended up being really hard to hit this tube, and it ended up just exploding the crankshaft again. So I tried adding a shield in place on top of the block, and the shield, since it's literally a shield, I figured might shield the block and actually protect it, but it only gave me one extra shot here, which means that I would have an engine where I could only have it rotate twice, which, you know, isn't really that useful. So I tried putting in a steering hinge because it seemed like a weird block and maybe you'd be able to resist the shot, and for whatever reason, this ended up working. I could shoot it and it didn't break at all. This is one where I'm thinking maybe those one by one by one blocks are just a little bit stronger, maybe because it's some sort of specialty block it's a bit stronger, but for whatever reason, it worked. So I was just gonna run with it for now. 
Now, it was really hard to hit the steering hinge, and I realized if I move over the cannon, it makes it way easier to hit it. I also ended up doubling up my cannons and steering hinges, but now hitting it was so much easier, because after it's off to the side, it ends up just falling that way, and getting consistent rotation was way easier. Now, the mechanism was still binding up a little bit on the inside, and hopefully smooth it out a bit, I ended up putting shields there. Since shields have a smooth surface, I was hoping maybe this would make things flow a little bit better. And with that done, it actually was working a lot better, and you can see I got a lot of rotations out of this before things break. But I figured once I have the other pistons in place and also a flywheel, it should iron out those bugs. So with all that done, I ended up moving the driver's seat ahead. But before I get those other pistons in place, I need to clean this one up a little bit because copying this over would be a little messy. Now starting out with my connection to the base, I ended up just making it a little bit skinnier. And after that, I have a whole bunch of random blocks on top here. And I ended up just deleting a lot of them and shrinking the design a lot and just using three blocks in the middle to hold up all the shields. After that, to connect up the cannons, you can see what I did here is just ended up deleting a lot of the blocks in the top and just going for one by one blocks as much as possible. And when I go to test it, it works in basically the same way, except it's a lot more streamlined and it's so much easier to see what's going on. Now, the other thing I need to do here is add in another crank. And this actually isn't too hard. Basically, what I had to do is just move over the helicopter engine on the right side. And I ended up just extending out the top crank all the way down. After I did that, I can attach another servo to the bottom and it just gives me another crank there to attach stuff to. So with that done, I just moved back in the right support and it should work just as before. Now, to hold it together, I was going to use some braces. Now, braces, again, in theory shouldn't have any collision. So by doing this, nothing should interfere, but it should make the whole crankshaft a little more rigid since I will be losing a little bit of energy every time the servos flex a little bit. So this should help with the transfer of power. Now I realized that everything was black, which was a little bit difficult to see. So I ended up just changing the default color. And once I found a color I was happy with, I ended up changing everything here and giving it a test. Works in basically the same way. And you can see that other crank is 180 degrees out of phase and I should be able to attach another piston to that. Now adding back in the flywheel here is pretty easy. I'm just adding in a bunch of weights to the bottom of the top part of the crankshaft and I do have to be careful that it's balanced because if it is unbalanced the whole thing is going to shake a lot and I was worried the pistons were going to freak out and start glitching and I ended up adding in some walls here just giving me a little bit more stability so that there's no chance the piston glitching out at all. So with this working mostly the next thing I wanted to do is get it to work automatically and I needed to put in a distance sensor to do that and putting it in place it didn't really seem to do anything but I realized I actually forgot to put the distance sensing side face down and after that you can see the cannon is shooting but it shoots twice during the rotation because it's actually looking a little bit too far. And after a little bit more tuning, I did get it to work, but it's very finicky. It sometimes works. It goes a little bit early sometimes, a little bit late sometimes. And after a little bit of tuning, it does seem to work, but now it's consistently early. And that does make sense because the distance sensor is actually looking a little bit before when I want the cannons to shoot. Now to hopefully counteract this, I was gonna add in delayed each of the cannons, but they just weren't shooting at all. And to get the delay to work, you need that consistent input being held. And the distance sensor doesn't do that. As soon as it sees something, Thing, it just flashes and then the pistons out of the way so quickly it can't really overcome that. Now I tried adding in some extra logic to hopefully buffer the input a bit to get this to work but it was really complicated and it wasn't working at all. Now I realized a really simple solution is just to move the distance sensor so that's right in front of the cannons. I didn't originally want to do this because I was worried it interfered with the pistons and also I was worried it was going to be a little bit too late but it seemed to mostly fire at the right time and it was interfering with it a little bit. So to prevent it from interfering with it I actually just pushed it out an extra block and once did that, it was able to shoot at the right time and it mostly seemed to work, but it was just a little underpowered. And in this test, I let it run here for a while and it was able to sustain a little bit of motion, but it would slow down a little bit. I figured an extra cannon would probably get me just a little bit more motion out of it. So after extending out the piston a little bit, I added in that extra cannon in place and I added another steering hinge to be able to hit. And once it did that, it seemed to have enough energy to actually get up to a pretty good speed here. Now you'll notice it does bind up sometimes, but with the extra pistons in place, it should prevent that from happening happening anymore. And finally here, I'm actually copying it over. Now the cylinder needs to be in the exact same spot as the first one, but I need the piston to start a little bit lower. After I put that piston in place here, I actually tried to line everything up and I realized it's slightly off center. Now I was hoping it would be okay because I really didn't want to move anything at this point, but it actually wasn't. And you can see the second piston gets stuck. So I had to fix that problem and move everything over here. And after I did that, it actually seemed to work fine. You'll notice it's pretty fast in this clip and it's actually because I don't have any of the weights on. So there's no flywheel basically, but it seems to be working pretty well. So after that, add in another servo here, and this one is really important. It's not just like a normal servo, and what it does is it rotates 90 degrees and then locks in place. What that's going to do is rotate the last two pistons 90 degrees out of phase, and that means I'll have a firing order of 1, 3, 2, 4, and that should give me a pretty balanced output. So just made sure to put those in place, then just had to move in the right support. After that, just had to connect everything up, and you can see here, it actually is working. Now, I got a pretty continuous rotation out of this, and I got the firing order I'm looking for. After that's done, I added out a whole bunch 
bunch of weights and I probably had on too many here, but I just wanted to make sure it was perfectly balanced and there's going to be no problems at all. And with that done, I just gave it a really long term test here, sped up a ton, and I had no problems at all. Basically, it just infinitely ran. And since it was working so well, I wanted to add on some wheels and start working on the powertrain. Now, it's kind of a bonus to get it to move anything at all, but I figured I had a pretty good amount of power here and I had a real shot to do something. So I started out and I ended up just attaching a servo to the other side like this. And after that, you see here, I'm putting in some propeller blades. Now, the propeller blades I'm just putting in place here, and these I'm hoping to get a little bit of thrust out of. They're going to be at a pretty low speed though, so I wasn't too confident they were going to do much. Now, the engine's able to speed up, which is actually really good here. I was worried under load install, but of course, I'm not really getting any power out of this. And adding in a wheel, you'll actually notice it slightly moves up and down. And that's because the crankshaft is two by two instead of one by one, and the wheel has to be attached slightly off center. That's why it's a little annoying that I'm using servos here, but it's pretty much the only way to go, unfortunately. But I figured maybe I can make my own wheel or something, and I wanted to try putting in a four bar linkage. Now to do that, you see here, I'm putting in four servos. These are gonna act just like bearings, right on the edge like this, and I ended up copying it to the bottom as well. And this just started a whole chain of problems. Firstly, getting these connected was actually kind of a lot of work because the braces, I had to make sure were the exact right length to do it. And after that, it just wasn't rotating for some reason. I was looking at it a bit closer and I realized some of the attachment points were wrong. So I ended up moving some stuff around and actually pulled it out a little bit further so it wouldn't rub directly against the servos. But that's when I noticed that the braces were actually hitting stuff and getting stuck. And I was under the assumption these should have no collision at all and they don't in the crankshaft. And for some reason, it just wasn't rotating properly. And I tried extending out some pieces and hopefully making stuff not collide. And eventually here, I kind of gave up on the design and I went for just a single servo. You can see this technically works and it actually looks a lot better than I was expecting. But the problem is it's ridiculously weak. And as I put a load on it, it could start spinning in the wrong direction. And you can see that happening here. So it's again, not great, but I figured maybe it'd be good enough to get something working. So I ended up attaching a wheel. And again, the wheel's gonna rotate slightly off center, but it should be close enough. And because of the way I have the output, I actually had to rotate all of the wheels around. But after I got them all in place, I finally tested it here and it just stalled out the engine immediately. It seems like that up and down motion just really is not working very well. And while I could maybe use a clutch or something to get it working, now we're getting into a territory where it's a lot more complicated. And I figured a propeller design was probably just the way to go here. Now, again, it wasn't working before, but what I can do now is add in helicopter blades, which are much bigger and at lower RPMs, I was hoping they'd get me a bit more thrust. Now I also added in some servos and this is so I can rotate the blades and allow them to catch the air a little bit more efficiently. And I tried bracing it here, but I accidentally got some stuff stuck and it just started to do this. So I went back and braced it in a little bit of a better way so it wouldn't freak out like that. And after I got it all reconnected, you can see here it's rotating the blades pretty well and I wanted to add on some suspension to the wheels to prevent them from glitching out so much, but they still didn't really like that. And the problem is just the sheer amount of weight I have on the crankshaft was causing them to buckle. So I deleted almost all of the weights that I could. After that, I ended up setting the stiffness all the way up on the suspension. And finally here, it seemed to be making some progress. I wasn't sure though if it was just bouncing around and vibrating and that's what was causing it to move or if it was actually the thrust I was producing. So I added some more blades on to see if that would help things. And it seemed to be going faster, but I'm going down a hill and this map with the rough terrain just isn't really cut out for these tests. And I ended up switching to a completely flat map here. After I did that, this test actually did show the speed increasing, but it also was stalling out the engine. So I ended up deleting two of the helicopter blades to reduce the load a little bit. And after that, it seemed to almost be able to keep it moving, but it would eventually stall out. So I ended up extending out the body and I wanted to add on four more pistons. Now this is a pretty desperate attempt because adding on more pistons doesn't necessarily mean I'm gonna get more power. The problem is the crankshaft will flex every time the piston strikes down and adding on long chains of this means that that flexing absorbs almost all of the energy and very little is transferred to the propeller. And it kind of started to work here, but the problem is just the sheer amount of weight is kind of canceling out any progress I had made and it really wasn't doing anything for me. So I went back to the design I had before and I got rid of the wheels entirely and I went for these hover board things. Now I tried attaching them to the bottom at first, but I realized you actually have to attach them to the sides, which I guess makes sense considering they're pushing air down. But anyway, testing it out here, it seemed to be a bit better. I was able to freely float around, but once I got up to about seven or eight miles an hour, it ended up just stalling out. But I figured maybe it was a fluke and I added on some steering here to make it a little bit easier for me to go where I wanted to. And again, you can see I got up to about seven miles an hour and it just stalls out. So I swapped out the thrusters I had for cannons since it was a little bit better fitting. And you can see I'm still able to turn as the cannons shoot, but I thought it was a little bit more fitting using cannons 
cannons for the searing instead of the thrusters. After that, I added on a hinge here, and these hinges are actually supposed to pull in the helicopter blades so that they cut the air less, so it'll give me less drag. This should reduce the load on the engine, and I'm hoping this will allow it to continuously run. Now you see me fold it forward, and after that, it actually seems to work. It's pretty consistently going at 6 miles an hour here. So with that done, I added in some compasses, and these are purely for the next test, because I wanted this to run for a long time while I wasn't at my computer. So after I got those in place, basically if it falls out of line on either side, it'll end up shooting the correct cannon and getting it to face north again. Now in this final test here, you see it runs, and it actually seems to be performing pretty well. And I just let it go for literally like 20 or 30 minutes here, and you can see it just continually ran, and it only died at the end due to a little lag spike, which seemed to glitch the engine a bit. But otherwise, I did actually get the engine to produce some useful work here. So guys, thanks for watching. I've never tried making an engine in Trail Makers before, and I'm glad I at least got something that could produce some useful work. Now I'm thinking of coming back to this in the future and using something different than Canon so that I can create a really good engine. But if you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. And otherwise, until next time.